How do you spread periods across years using the pivot function? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of farcats.co.uk. So in the previous video, we had a look at how we can spread these dates across these years, and we used some code similar to this. This is just shown for one particular year. So the problem with the code that we had is we had to repeat lots of stuff. We had to repeat these three lines for every single year. We had to repeat this line for every single year. Now that's okay to start with, but then the maintenance might get a little bit tricky. You have to remember to keep going back and keep adding additional columns in two different places. Now we don't need to do that by using the pivot function. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate these, but we're going to have each of these not running across, but running down. So we'll have year 2016, number of days 362, year 2017, number of days 365, and then we pivot it. So if you'd like to do this as a practice activity, then this code, as you see it, is attached to this YouTube video and in the description. So please have a look and enjoy. Good luck. Right, so in the previous video, we looked at why this had to be, for instance, less than the next year. So if you haven't done the previous video, please have a look at it because I won't be going into these again. Now what I'm going to do is create a new table. So create table, and this is just going to have a list of the years. Notice I'm saying years as opposed to year. Year is a reserved word, so I avoid reserved words as much as I can. And it's just going to have years and it's going to be an int, and that's it. Now I'm going to populate it. So insert into years the values 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. I'll also put right at the beginning a drop table if exists. Years. That can only be done if you are using SQL Server, I think it's 2016 or later. If not, then you have to test to see if the table exists as an object and then drop it if it does. So what I'm now going to do is, well, I need to have a look at each of these rows, the start date and the end date with each of the years. So when I've got two with each, so each of the rows with each of these rows, that is a cross join. So. Let's remove some of this functionality, just commenting it out. So that will give me the years in 2017, but I want all the years. So I will now cross join that with my years table, which just contains these numbers. So now I need to make these not fixed dates in quotation marks, but dynamic ones based on the year. So how can I create this? What function do I need? It is date from parts and have a look at the link if you don't know how to use date from parts. It's fairly straightforward though. Date from parts just gives me what I want in terms of the years, the month and the day. And that creates a date from that. So I'm going to say this is dates and this is years. It just makes my typing a bit easier. So I can copy that over here and then we need the next year here. How can we do that? Very easy. We just add one to the year. And again, we just put it over here. Now I'm going to change this because it's no longer days in 2017, it's days duration. There's one more column I need, and that is the year itself. So I'm putting y dot years just so you know that it's definitely coming from this table. So let's have a look at it now. So we have got for this first line, all of these days duration. And then we've got this line, this line, all of this is working. However, we're getting all of these negatives. As shown in the previous video, the negatives means it's outside of that particular year. So you won't have a 2018 duration for this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my CTE, common table expression, and then say select star from my dates. So that gives me exactly what we've got. Now, if you see this incorrect syntax, if there's a common table expression, you need a semicolon at the end of the previous statement. So I'll run it again, there we go. 
And now I want to get rid of these rows where the day duration is negative, or even if it's equal to zero. I don't think that's really helping. How do I do that? I just use a where. So where the day's duration. So I want to retain those where it is greater than zero. So let's run this. So now we've got a much more reduced list, a much more manageable list, and in fact, a much more accurate list. Why couldn't I put this where in here? Well, I could, but I would have to say where all of this is greater than zero. Because I can't just say where day's duration is greater than zero, because that's in the select clause. The select clause gets evaluated after the where clause. So putting it in a CTE makes it a lot more readable. So next I need to pivot. Now I can't pivot with a where clause. The only things I can do is select from pivot. So I need to put this in another CTE. So I'll just put a comma and then I'll say my dates too as. So I don't have to put the word with again. So now I can say select star from my dates too and that will get me back to where I am. But now I can add the pivot. So the pivot makes these years, in this particular case, go across and puts the dates duration in the right column. So I say pivot and then in brackets, I need my aggregation. So what am I totaling in this case? Could be min, could be max. In this case, I'm using a sum. So sum of days duration. Next is the word for, and then I want the columns. Well, the columns are represented in years. And then I say in, and then I need to specify the column names. So 2016, and I need to do it in these brackets as well. I can't just put 2019, that won't be accepted. So that closes the brackets for this bit. I need to close the brackets for this bit. So I need another brackets. And then I need to put an alias, even though I'm not going to be using this alias, I need to put it in anyway. So hopefully you can see what this pivot does. So pivot, we sum a particular column, we say what the column that's going across is, and then we say what the figures are. So let's execute that. And there we have our final answer. Now, if you wanted to change all of the nulls to zeros, then you would need to do another CTE and then say, maybe use the is null function and say is null 2016 comma zero. And that would change it into a zero as opposed to a null. So the disadvantage with this method is that I have got two sets of dates here and I would need to update these two. So for instance, if I wanted to put in 2021, I would have to do that. And then for 2022, I would put it here and put it here. But that maintenance is relatively simple, certainly less simple than the version that we started off with. I don't have to duplicate huge amounts of rows with the possibility of making mistakes. And this is actually not that difficult to read. You could also create a temporary table if you wanted to, just restrict it to this individual item. You could make things dynamic. So you could have a list of numbers going up to whatever, 1 million, and then just concentrate on the years which are used. You could make this dynamic as well, but that is actually fairly tricky. And if you want that, just search for dynamic pivot table in Google. So in this video, we created a quite simple table here. Once we have got this difficult bit done, and then we got rid of any non relevant rows, and then we pivoted it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this practice activity. If you did, why not like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you can be notified of more videos when they come out. If you want more practice activities, please click the link on your screen. Or why not join me in my Udemy courses, where you can learn about TSQL, database administration, SSRS, SSAS, SSIS, and more. There are full details in the description to this video or on my website, filecats.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.